up everyone long time no see or speak it's been a while since i've come on here and filmed a video for you guys but to make a long story quick of course with covid things were very all over the place in addition it just didn't really feel right for me to actually make these videos um so much was happening in the world so much upheaval it just didn't even feel right but here we are 2021 in the same predicament <laughs> so i figure why not just go after my passion anyway which is astrology so um without further ado we are going to get into this video starting now so this is going to be the second part of my astrology series the first part was my planets that was almost a year ago at this point um summertime will be a year so yeah first part was planets but now we are going to get into the houses okay um i want i know right now it's sounding pretty basic and straightforward information that at this point a lot of us who are into astrology already know but i am not going to start off just talking about the houses i am actually going to talk about the houses and start today with the 12th house in relation to past lives okay so what inspired me to come back was you know i love astrology i'm always reading about it whether i'm making these videos or not so I came across information regarding the past lives. Um, I forget what I was going through, but I was like, man, I wonder what I did in the past life for things to be a certain way or for me to have chosen a certain family or a certain life path. Anyway, I discovered through the 12th house, you can find links to your past life. Usually astrologers only talk about the nodes, the lunar nodes, north node and south node, which are also very strongly linked to karmic past lives. But I don't think people talk enough about the 12th house, which is also known as the house of karma. So without further ado, I am first going to quickly explain what the houses are and how they represent basically each sign. What does the 12th house represent? Well, and I'm gonna link this video so that you guys can get a refresher. It is related to Neptune, the planet, and you know, Neptune rules over Pisces. So just hearing that, you already know this is gonna be something involving the subconscious or unconscious mind. These are things related to things that we cannot see. It is not based on the reality that we can touch and feel. It is something greater than ourselves. So with the 12th house, the ego pretty much dissolves and the soul yearns for something more, yearns for wholeness, yearns for merging with the collective through the heart and the soul. It's not only just a yearning, it's something that you can just feel intuitively. In other words, it is something that astrologers who are really advanced at this call divine homesickness. And what I mean by divine homesickness, it is the state that we are in pre-birth. Um, I was going to say the womb, but I would like to say beyond the womb. It is who we are, our spiritual self, the spiritual self that chose a certain life path. So when we talk about us yearning for this wholeness that's what i mean that feeling that we had pre-birth where boundaries weren't a thing where the ego wasn't the driving force behind everything where there were just generally no fears and more so uh uh opening up and compassion in relation to others versus uh individual individualistic stance the problem with people wanting this wholeness as we all know is fear you know, um, wholeness requires letting go, letting go of all that we know, letting go of the material and surrendering to life. So that wholeness is extremely difficult for majority of the world to actually attain. So rather than actually feeling that wholeness that is real, what people tend to do is find that feeling through other things, which is why the 12th house also has a dark side. It's not just fantasies and beauty and all these other, you know, uh, fancy for old, <laughs> I can't even talk, but all those fancy like things, it, that's not all the 12th represents. It also has a dark side. So back to what I was saying, 
rather than actually surrendering to life, people will find that wholeness through sex, you know, connecting with another and feeling a, a merge, um, through drugs and alcohol, not really being in your reality state. But on a healthier level, people will also try to find that wholeness through, you know, meditation, devotion, God and religion. But even that can be a little bit messed up in a way because at times, especially for those who fall into the category of religion, it becomes less so about connecting with God and the person trying to play God, which is why um, lots of astrologers will say that Pisces have a God complex. And lastly, because there's so much more that goes into the 12th house, but I really just want to focus on connecting it to past lives. In general, like I've already mentioned, the 12th house represents our unconscious mind. So in relation to that, it represents our natural urges and desires, patterns we have without even realizing them. And there are patterns that we don't realize because a lot of the times they stem from the past and not just the past as far as our childhood goes, which that is connected to it as well, um, past lives. I already mentioned how 12th house is also known as the house of karma. So whatever sign or planet is in that 12th house is either going to represent a quality that we need to bring from a past life and use for our current path, or which I find most of the time it means a quality that we're bringing into this life that is actually detrimental, but we're meant to transform it into something for our betterment that will contribute to our purpose or desire, whatever it is that we're meant to do and experience in this lifetime. Now, since I've gotten the basics of what I wanna, what I wanna cover um, out the way, I now want to focus on the signs through the 12th house, okay? And today's sign of focus is going to be Aries, you know? Um, I'm gonna choose it just because it's technically or it is the first sign of the zodiac in the wheel. Even though Pisces is the first discovered sign, Aries is the first sign and um, usually represents the first house. So we're going to talk about 12th house and Aries. As we know from my previous videos, um, and more specifically the Mars meets Venus video, Aries the sign is ruled by the planet Mars. So before I talk about Aries and Mars in relation to the 12th house or in the 12th house, I'm going to give a quick Grecian backstory on why Aries is so known for being um, associated with anger and aggression, right? Now, Back in the Grecian era, Zeus, as we all know, was married to Hera, who he consistently cheated on. Now, Zeus gave birth to Athene, like literally gave birth. I think she like came out of his head or something like that. Um, didn't cheat on Hera or make a baby off Hera, um, literally decided I'm gonna create Athene. And that pissed Hera off. So out of anger and spite, she created Eris. And that's how it's pronounced, um, I think it's pronounced Greek wise, um, even though we say Aries. Now, she created Eris, like I mentioned, out of spite and anger, which is why Eris's image is ruled by anger and aggression and assertiveness. Um, so, in addition to that, um, Eris, as he grew up, was always in battle. And when he was in battle, he always had his three, I guess, homies or whatever you want to call them in this metaphoric story. There was Deimos, which represents fear. Phobos, which represents fright, and Eris, which represents strife, right? So not a good combination. And it's not meant to be because despite what we associate with Aries as the sign, Eris was not a great fighter. Um, he constantly lost battles. He was clumsy, messy, um, just full of all this rage that didn't have a real direction and just made him look bad versus people honoring him. He was just made a fool of constantly which is interesting because Mars, the planet, is respected by Greek, the Grecians and just 
Greek history in general, okay? They always looked at Mars, the planet, as the god of spring. Because as we all know, Aries and Mars represent um, springing into action, um, taking charge. So wherever Mars resides in your chart or whichever house, that's the area of life where you're meant to show the courage, the bravery, the mastering of life. And even though Aries is always discussed in a way that is, you know, unnecessary anger, childishness, and all of that. In a healthy manner, Aries is actually extremely strong. In a strong sense, Aries represents growth, survival, and of course, as I already mentioned, the mastering of life. So when we think about Aries and Mars, the thing to always keep in mind is, you know, think of them as people or placements that are um, grappling with an issue, attacking a problem, and mastering a difficulty or a skill. So if you have Mars in the 12th house, you actually have an interesting um, outlook um, or you have a very interesting unconscious mind or subconscious mind, whatever you want to say, right? Uh, Mars in the 12th house is elusive, you know? It is, when it's here, it's very present, it's in your face, but I don't know where they'll be gone. And then when they come back, they have a completely new identity and you're just like, what? That is Mars or Aries in 12th house, okay? You know, since Aries um, represents the beginning of things um, or beginning of life, they tend to be associated with selfishness and that selfishness, if done in a healthy way, works in their favor. But when Mars is in the 12th house, um, it's less of a selfish act or behavior it's more of a um, instead of me first it's a matter of you first and I'll help you that type of attitude and because Mars is in the 12th house you know the 12th house since it is represented by the subconscious mind and our unconscious thoughts it's kind of hidden so a person with this type of placement could have all this rage and anger inside of them, but you would never really know it until one day, based on the other aspects in their chart, it explodes out of nowhere. Usually a person with this placement has a lot of hidden thoughts and fantasies and dreams even um, associated with violence and aggression and just destructive behaviors and patterns in general. And in addition to this, similar to like the sign of Pisces, where Pisces feels everybody's energies and everybody's moods and feelings to the point where it's so much and they want to escape. It's the same thing with Mars or Aries in the 12th house. You usually can feel other people's anger and will at times act out and assume that it's something that is connected to you when it's not even your own emotion or your own feeling or your own anger, you know? Um, kind of similar to Aries and, you know, one thing I really respect about Aries, they don't like bullies. They tend to be the one to defend others. So that's kind of what I got from that in a way. Like, you know, it's very similar. Um, it's taking that defensive, um, I'm here to protect you, Aries stance, but in the form of a Pisces way because what you're feeling does not belong to you. So a way that you can help your Mars in 12th house or Aries in 12th house in this lifetime is really start investigating yourself, really tapping into that anger um, or tapping into those feelings of whininess. Um, and I say whininess because Mars in 12th house also takes on that person who is constantly complaining about life but not really ever doing anything about it, not taking enough action. And, you know, that's not to say that with this placement you're just going to be lazy and never change your life because, like I said, aspects and other planets in your chart can change that, you know? Um, I, I have my 12th house is in Aries, so I'm, I, I always do what I want to do if I have the passion for it but um yeah it will naturally give you that feeling of what is the point of all of this um what am I doing with my life but at the same time not doing much about it um but back to the advice I would give for people who have Mars in the 12th house, I would advise you to really investigate all things associated with your anger and actions and just um, impulsive decisions, right? Also, look into your dreams, okay? Because for those of us who have Mars or Aries in our 12th house, 
we, uh, at least what I like to believe, have a lot of dreams that are associated with fighting or some type of aggression. I know a lot of people, or most people I think, that I've met have a, has have had at least one or two dreams where they were fighting. But man, when I was younger and didn't know that I had this anger and aggression inside of me before it came out as I grew up, um, I used to have constant, constant dreams of beating people up. Like really, like not normal, like constantly having dreams or having dreams where I'm arguing with somebody. There was also some form of aggression, I guess because I wasn't projecting it um, in the real world, it just came through in my dreams, which is very interesting, but um, that cracked me up. <laughs> okay, um, so now let's get into Aries in the 12th house and how it is connected to your past life. Okay, so I didn't really need my notes for this. Um, <laughs> it's going to be pretty much straight to the point, but of course I'm going to give a little story, background story of why I found this very interesting and pretty much extremely realistic. Um, so if you have Aries in the 12th house, your past life was pretty much all about your survival, right? In the past life, you may have been a warrior or um, something in invoking action and violence you know you probably also could have lived a life where you once again had to constantly survive so living in a time where there's war famine things of that nature well um, wherever you were, were or whatever was going on your main focus was to survive right um not only could that have been you know one of your paths another path is you know you could have had a situation in the past life where anger and aggression took an extremely ugly turn, which is why now in this life, you have to deal and manage your anger. In a past life, you could have gotten into a really serious battle or argument with someone and either somebody died violently or you died violently, either by accident or intent. Somebody either intentionally killed one of, you either killed somebody intentionally or somebody intentionally killed you or out of anger and mis misplaced anger and aggression accidentally ended up killed or being killed. That is what your past life pretty much consists of. And you know, these are the extremes I'm saying. I'm pretty sure there are a plethora of ways that this could have manifested in your past. You know, you could have also just been one of those people who was constantly bickering, constantly um, misplacing your anger, constantly being super selfish in a really unhealthy way, taking charge, but not in the best of ways. Um, maybe even taking charge, but um, under the illusion of you doing something action-wise for a greater cause, but it turns out you didn't really do anything. It was just all an illusion, you know, 12th house. So yeah, um, another theme that I see with Mars in the 12th house, um, person probably could have died via knife, via guns, you know, those types of violent weapons are associated with Aries and Mars placement, okay? And I'm going to presume, based off of everything that I've read, your focus, if you have Aries or Mars in your 12th house, is to find healthy areas to release your anger and your aggression, okay? Like, and don't deny it. Don't, um, don't be in denial. Don't be delusional, 12th house, Pisces. Don't be delusional about your aggression, your misplaced anger. Um, and don't be delusional about your lack of action, your lack of... Um, fight and spring your lack of shining for fear of focusing too much on the ego um, you know because even though it's beautiful that Mars in the 12th house can represent a person who is more so of a um, you go and I will give you the cushion to help you get there even though that's great if overdone um, you will completely lack the necessary skills to achieve the things that you want to achieve right and will always be at the mercy of others. And happiness doesn't require, or action doesn't require constant sacrifice, okay? And 
really quickly the reason why I found this so interesting is because I went to a medium years ago like 2017 and she told me that in a past life it was so random in a past life somebody threw me off of a bridge like literally killed me um, there are so many other factors in my chart that are promoting this as well based off of what kind of person I was XYZ but we'll get into that as these videos continue okay Thank you so much if you actually made it all the way to the end. I hope you guys found this interesting and really liked it because I really love talking about it. And I cannot wait until my second video for this category of the houses.